I want you to walk out of here today feeling hopeful, not only for yourself, but in a message that you can share with the people around you that are struggling to have some hope right now. Okay, the first thing we need to do when we are in a hopeless state is that we have to call out to God. We have to say, God, I need some help, right? Please. But it sounds easy, but sometimes it's not always easy because sometimes we get really busy trying to solve all the problems that are going on. I know I feel like that person in the circus that like spins the, the, the plates, and I feel like I'm constantly spinning other plates, and sometimes I forget just to stop and just to pray and ask God for his help. Because we get in this, this, you know, this belief that, that God helps those who help themselves. Not in the Bible, people. <laughs> What's in the Bible is ask and you shall receive or you don't have because you don't ask. That's what's in the Bible. We have a God who wants to help us. We just need to ask him. There's some people that as soon as hard times hit, their knees hit the ground. They are like, yes, oh my gosh, I forgot that you're there, but I know you're there now, and I need to pray. And that's good. I wish I was like that. <laughs> I tend to be more like Anne from Anne of Green Gables. My favorite movie. Her line is, I can never pray when I'm in the depths of despair. <laughs> I love Anne. And yes, I feel the same way. I have a hard time praying when I'm in the depths of despair. And for me, it's because when I pray, all those masks that I wear through my day to get through my day, that perky, happy smile, it all doesn't work with God. Because he knows me. He knows I'm wearing the mask. So the masks have to fall off. And so when I am there praying on the ground and asking God for help when I'm in the depths of despair, my prayers sound more like, God, just help me, over and over and over again, 50 times with sobs in between. Those are my prayers. And the amazing thing about those prayers is how faithful God is and that the Holy Spirit comes right in next to me and he prays the words, I cannot pray for me. And I know that and I believe that. So if you think about the truly deep friendships you have, it's probably because you were vulnerable with them. You let them in at a time that it was not pretty. You let them see that part of you that was broken. And they returned that trust that you gave them with revealing their own brokenness to you. And that allowed true intimacy to happen. So whatever has you thinking that this is not an opportunity for me, this is just trial with no good at the end of it. Not true. Not true. God will use it. My suffering created opportunities time and time again. My divorce was my opportunity to understand God's redemptive power. Courtroom battles were my opportunity to learn how to be the lion and not just the lamb. Autism was my opportunity to develop patience and compassion. Financial crisis was my opportunity to fully rely on God to provide for us. And single parenting is my opportunity to co-parent with God. I trust him all the time with that. Like, oh, that girl, I've got three teenage girls. Oh, that girl, I can't talk to her right now. You're going to have to do it. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> Amen. As I grew in faith, I began realizing that every challenge was just going to give me another opportunity, and that opportunity was going to open up another door to the people that I could relate to, and I could talk to, and I could minister to. So what Satan meant for bad, God was going to use for good. It's really easy to live in joyful expectation when you think good things are on the horizon, when good things are right around the corner. But I think God is going for something deeper in us than that. I want to encourage you to live in expectation of all the good God has planned for you and that he's going to bring out of your current 
difficult circumstances. The good you can imagine and the good you can't imagine. If you've decided to believe in God, I say believe all the way. Believe all the way. Believe what the world doesn't understand. Believe that every arrow Satan throws at you, every unexpected challenge, every sickness, every abuse, every hard day can and will be redeemed by our God. He will turn it around and he will use it for your good and for his glory. And we can live in expectation of that.